Um, there's another connection to, we are back again to it, uh, yeah. to the chill wave Yeah. Uh, you apparently uh, record, you apparently recorded your, your album in your, in your bedroom. Yes. Uh, All the chill wave records record there. It yeah. Is, it seems to be uh, uh, a condition to become a chill wave to record. I guess. It. The thing is for, for me, and I'm, I'm sure for most of the chill wave artists, is that it's not even something you think about. It's just like, that's what I had available to me to record music. Like, I, it wasn't a conscious thing. Like, it's time to record an album in my bedroom. Like, as opposed to anywhere else, it's just like, that's where all my shit was. Like, I my, I have an upright piano in my bedroom, I have a guitar, microphones, and all my equipment and keyboards and stuff like that. And that's just how it came together. Just where everything was. Mentioning keyboards and guitars and stuff, uh, what are you using, what are you using during you know, live? Well, I can, oh, for live performance. Yeah, um, but for both. For okay, for both. For well. For Technically, for live and for recording, I use the same stuff. I have my uh, my laptop, and then I have this external audio card, an M Audio Firewire 610. I used to have the 410 of the same thing, um, so it's basically just like an external audio card, so I can plug microphones, guitars, anything into it, and record it into the computer. That's literally like my entire studio setup. Is that, and then whatever's around me, like guitars, uh, pianos, me singing, and then. Um, all that sort of thing. And then for Cerulean, it was actually the first album I've ever done where I um, s started some of the rhythms with actual drum samples from like a, a folder of drum samples. Like normally I record everything myself and I'm going back to that for the next album. But for Cerulean, I wanted like, I wanted it to sound a little easier in some places and have very like direct sort of recognizable pop drum sounds. So. Yeah, that's essentially my entire setup, is computer and that audio card. And then live, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, live, I do have the, the MIDI thing. The, uh, yes, the Akai MPD32. So I fool around on that, I sing, and I have the computer. All the more reason that I have to be very, very uh, intense and physical on stage so that people are interested in what you're doing and not being like space bar, or, you know what I mean? So. so. I think you. We are, we are <laughs> nearly through it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> where did where did you get your this my fetish question? Yes. The last two ones. Uh -huh. Where did you get your musical education? Oh, uh, it's a good question. I, it's been sort of all over. I was classically trained on piano from four to uh, twelve. Yes, four to twelve. So that was eight years. By uh, John Rusnick was his name, Kylie and John Rusnick. Um, it was like a private tutoring thing. And then uh, I went to a music magnet middle school called uh, Walter Reed, and I learned upright bass and viola. No, viola. And then I learned upright bass in high school at Hamilton High School. Yes. Okay. So classically trained on piano from four to twelve. And then middle school, I learned viola, and that was three years. And, uh, and I played electric bass. And then high school, the next four years, I learned upright bass, and uh, I developed my electronics more, and all of that sort of thing. And then um, from the end of middle school and through high school and to where I am now, I was recording the whole time and like making albums and stuff like that. So that was happening simultaneously while I was learning those other instruments. Do you have a music, uh, uh, a record collection? Uh, of my own stuff or of, or do you mean like in life, like a record collection? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I unfortunately have just digital. I, the thing is I do buy all my music. I buy off of iTunes and I buy off of Boomcat, etc., etc. But it's digital, so I have a hard drive. I don't have anything physical. I have like random CDs from when I was in middle school, but it's not a collection. So it's very disappointing to me. And only within this past year have I actually started to buy vinyl um, because of that desperate need for something physical. Like when I truly love a record, to get it on vinyl is amazing. It's a great feeling to be like, I did it. This is how much I love this artist. Like, look at what I did. So, it's like that. Yes. So, it's not hopeless. No. You're it can be. It's beautiful. You're in, in a good way. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> so, 
uh, in order for the radio show, because we it's going to be also on the radio, sure, sure. Uh, we don't only want to play your music. That's kind of boring. So uh, <laughs> it's so boring. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give us two or three tracks you're really digging at the moment? Yes. Or in general, and give two or three sentences explanation yes. um, why we should play them. Yes. I might have to write them down, though, because the names for a couple of them are a little weird. So, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well. Yes. The first one is uh, by this band called Azeda Booth that um, I toured with. It's a strange name, but this, this band Braids that I toured with. Yeah. Uh, in the States, they're like good friends now, and they showed me this band, and they, this band, Azeda Booth, has like changed my life. And this song, uh, it might be a little hard to find, but it's called Landscape, parentheses, with grass, is the most like emotional, like intense thing I've ever heard. Like, it's very. Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't written with a fountain pen in a very long time, so. Um, I actually have one, I'll use a different pen. Um, a Zeta Booth, Landscape with the Grass. It's very emotional, and the, the lead singer sort of sounds like, uh, I think her name is like Kriya Brecken or something, the woman from Moom, the lead singer of Moom. So it's very, very creepy and like tiny and dry on top of a very lush, melodic structure within their music, and it's, it's just like, scary like the lyrics are very very intense the the main part of the song is like uh your children hate you your children say they hate you and it's just like very very creepy being sung with that kind of like tinny voice so i'm obsessed with this song i could geek out on it forever and then i'm obsessed with the whole band so um yes and the last point about them is apparently they don't exist anymore so there's no like live shows to be seen there's only like the record and a couple of EPs to obsess over forever. Maybe they kiss them. Oh God, I hope not. Braids knows them, so I hope not. They're like friends of theirs. Um, but it's great, it's fucking amazing music. And then uh, there's another song I'm really into that's a, it's, a, it's like hardcore trance music. It's like really, really just like gay dance music. Like, like four on the floor, like. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Or the artist. It's it's on. Um, I write it down. It's the song Slacker. This is the worst name for a song ever. There's nothing about this that's redeeming. This song. It's just totally, totally like geek horror. horror. It's the worst. The song is called Slacker, and it's on a State of Trance 2011. Yeah, if I if I don't find it, I will I will email you. And yes. Email it. <laughs> it's it should be on iTunes. It's just. Fully embarrassing. I'm gonna put a little asterisk next to it so you know that it's gonna ruin my reputation. State of Trance 2011. Um, it's the worst. By Armin Van Buren. It's the DJ. Ugh, the worst. Okay. Yeah, those Dutch ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so good though. It's the best song. Um, that that and then I need to think of another song that's redeeming and makes me look cool that I've been listening to. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I've been listening to Braids and Gobble Gobble, these two bands that I've toured with a lot, so I should just say something by them. I'll just write both their names down. I don't have any songs in, in particular, but did you see me write Baths? Yeah. Did you see me just start to write Baths? Because I've seen it. I saw it all over the page. I'm not that egotistical, I promise. Yeah, Jesus I Christ. But, but that's like the worst thing I could have done is like, <laughs> baths. Like, you should listen to baths. Should we film that? Sorry. Oh, God. Do you want to film that? <sighs> so horrible. We have to film that. Yeah. Look, see, there's the mistake. That's where I, I started to write baths. Because <laughs> I'm such a prick. Sorry. Okay. So Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore that. Braids and Gobble Gobble. These are the two other bands that are both essential listening. Oh, la, la. All oh, right. Yeah. You're through it. You made it. I did it. We did it. We did. Luxembourg. Oh, mom. No, <laughs> don't exit. Your no one saw us. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Handshake. Yes. And. <laughs> Fantastic. Did it go well? I think yes. Was it recording? <laughs>